Welcome to chapter 13.2. This section is about line integrals. And here what we do is we define an integral over a curve. Okay, um, so first we are going to consider the line integral of a scalar function. And let me start with the definition. So, so let f be a function with three variables be a continuous function continuous scalar function and let c of t be the curve defined by this so we define c of t as a parametric curve x of t y of t and c of t now this is a curve in r3 okay. let uh, f of x be a curve be a continuous scalar function and let c of t be the curve defined like this then the line integral the line integral the line integral of f over the curve c defined using this definite integral so we have a definite integral that goes from a to b of f of xt yt and c t times the magnitude of c of t so c prime t dt c prime t dt this is the way we define the line integral of this scalar function over the curve C. And here, so where your parameter T is in between A and B. Okay. Again, so we defined the line integral of a scalar function like this. So basically what we need to do is we need to evaluate our function at these x, y, and c values. After that, we have to multiply this function by the magnitude of c prime of t and then dt. Now, this ds, this ds is a line segment on the curve. So, if I, if I draw this curve, We have this x, y, and c axis. X, y, and c axis. And then we have this curve. This curve c of t. And let's say this is the initial point and this is the terminal point. Initial point. point and this is the terminal point or final point at this point your t value equals to a and at this point your t value equals to b now ds is a line segment on this curve Now, okay, good. Okay, let's consider the first example. Okay, so we have a curve, which is a helix, defined using this parametric equation. So my helix is given by cosine of t, sine of t, and t. And our t values goes from 0 to 2 pi. The scalar function f is given by 
x squared plus y squared plus c squared and now we want to evaluate this line integral okay now using the definition of the line integral we write little s ds this equals to integral of f of x t comma y of t comma c of t times magnitude of c prime t dt and t goes from a to b okay so first let's evaluate f of x t y t comma c of t So basically we want to evaluate our function on the curve so on this curve x coordinate is given by cosine t y coordinate is given by sine t and the c coordinate is given by t okay, so now my function is x squared plus y squared plus c squared but x equals to cosine t, y equals to sine t, and c equals to t squared. So if you evaluate this, you will get cosine squared t plus sine squared t plus t squared. But cosine squared t plus sine squared t is 1 so basically on the curve my function equals to 1 plus t squared okay now let's calculate c prime of t okay. c of t is mm, cosine t sin t comma t therefore c prime or the derivative of c equals to negative sin t comma cosine t comma 1 okay, now what we need is the magnitude of this magnitude of c prime t which equals to square root of minus sine t squared plus cosine t squared plus 1 squared this is the way we calculate the magnitude of a vector again we have sine squared t plus cosine squared t term which equals to 1 1 plus 1 is 2 basically we have square root of 2 So now let's copy this. So now we need to substitute the values. Okay. Lower value of t is zero. Upper value of t is two pi. Now your function value is 1 plus t squared so we have 1 plus t squared times magnitude of c prime t is root 2 dt okay. now root 2 is a constant and we can pull out a constant from the integral sign let's integrate this we have root 2 times integral of 1 is t integral of t squared is t cubed over 3 now we need to apply the lim limits apply the upper limit first so 
root 2 times 2 pi plus 2 pi to the power 3 over 3 minus the lower limit is 0 so you get 0 here and 0 here so basically the lower limit will give you 0 okay, and this is the value of the line integral